Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I've spent an inordinate amount of time trying to get this to work and prevent the scramjet portion from exploding. And one of the steps I did was actually make it a separate part. It was originally integrated into the body, but just to see if that would help things, I made it a separate part so that it could be in category engines instead of uh, category pods. But it's still overheated and it still had the plume wrong and ultimately I realized and I haven't implemented this yet that it was because it has the RCS built in that the plume keeps uh, being on even when the engine is off and so I've turned off the RCS module on here so now these RCS don't work right now only the front ones do and I'll have to separate them off into their own part or merge them back into the body this is a lot of stuff in Blender, but uh, if it makes it work, it makes it work, right? So that was the plume. I can just deal with that by turning off the RCS or removing it. But the explody part is a separate thing. Now with the old scramjet that I had made for the SR-72 slash Darkstar, uh, with that, what I did to ensure that the scramjet did not have too much thrust at low velocities, right, because we don't want it to have full thrust at low velocities, is so uh, to make the max thrust, the base max thrust, very low, like 30 kilonewtons, and then add a multiplier to it as it got faster. Even the rapier has this sort of multiplier effect. That's why as you go faster, the rapier builds up a whole lot more thrust as it goes along. And so that's how I did it with the SR-72 and uh, Slash Dark Star, and how I intended to do it here. However, it seems like, at least with this one, it tends to make the thing blow up. And it's basing the heat production on the base thrust level, uh, the 30 kilonewtons or whatever. And so if it gets too high above that, it starts to get exploding and overheat. So I've had to go backwards on that, and now it, at static thrust is a whole 200 kilonewtons, which is more than I wanted, but it's certainly not enough to actually, you know, propel this to any great extent. Uh, so I'll accept it for now. I mean, it says 3,000 kilonewtons at Mach 7. I don't know whether that's, that's going to be enough. And then there's the, another mode that gets us less, but at Mach 10. So... We go in mode L first and maybe switch to mode H, which gets less efficiency. But we'll see. We never got to the part where we switched between the jet slash ramjets and the scramjet. We exploded at that point. So we'll see whether we can make the switch properly. And who knows if we get to the air spikes this time or not. I've added body flaps. Our center mass and center lift look like this. And then uh, the fuel is up here. And as we dump fuel, it is now proper, so that's something else I fixed. Uh, actually, separating this off uh, as a separate part somewhat helps with that. But whether that's good for, like, re-entry, I don't know. We're a long way off from that. So let's take this out to the runway and see if we can at least get the scramjet part working and see how fast it gets us, whether it has enough thrust or not. And then, well... Then there's a the whole matter of the fuel balance between the hydrogen and oxygen and whether the aerospikes will have enough to get to orbit and it is a long story with this. Again, mass-wise, it's about the same mass as the Sabre engine. That's not the Sabre engine. The Skylon, which uses the Sabre engine, but... And I've got the cabin fixed now. I just forgot to put the cabin in this install, that's all. That was easy enough. My throttle isn't working right now, so I'll use that. And we do have the atmospheric autopilot. Okay, now it's been very squirrely on previous tests where I have failed miserably at getting it to do what I want it to do. Uh, so I'm hoping, no, well, it's looking better this time. I widened the wheelbase out. I moved the landing gear so that it'll be a little bit more stable, hopefully as we take off. It had a lot of tiltiness and everything. Oh, I didn't realize this runway had hops in it. 
Okay, I'll try and rotate. I better not scrape the body flaps. I wanted those. Okay, we got off without scraping the body flaps within the runway, but 200 meters per second is a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. And I don't know why it makes that sound either, but... So yes, sorry about calling this a platypus. Apparently that uh, made people feel like it was not as wonderful as they initially thought it was. <laughs> uh, but I do like comparing things to like wildlife and critters and such. So, Like for instance my Kumo lander, Kumo being spider, it does look like a spider. The intention with the towels here were that they are the towels from the Venture Star, which are lower maintenance than the towels from the space shuttle. So that's why they're somewhat metallic, because those were metallic. Probably more expensive, but if they save us some maintenance costs, that'll be for the best. And then the body was the ceramic-ish body of Skylon. That's why it's got that color. So ceramic over titanium structure, if you can swing that, plus uh, those Venture Star tiles. Alright, well I'm gonna switch modes here so we can accelerate faster. So ramjet mode, even though it's a little bit early for that. I'll have to fix the numbers to make it a little bit more realistic, give the jet mode a little bit more efficiency, and make sure the ramjet mode isn't so good at this speed. But, as I've mentioned, that whole business is complicated. So, just in case people are not familiar, what's the difference between a ramjet and a scramjet? Ramjets still require you to slow down the incoming air to subsonic velocities so that you can do combustion. But with a scramjet, it's, the scramjet stands for supersonic combustion ramjet. So it's still a ramjet, but they are trying to make it so that you can do the combustion without slowing the air coming in down. And there you can then get higher speeds, right? The hope is that you can get to speeds beyond Mach 5. And of course, they've demonstrated some some possibility of that, but we're still a long way off from making it a practical thing. I'm going to attempt to ignite it at Mach 3. It shouldn't get that much thrust at that point, and we'll take a look at that. But I mean, keeping in mind that these, the ma main ramjets that we have right now are producing 1,200 apiece. So that has prop requirement met 70 something. I don't know, this is full on. That one says 70 something. I wonder. Okay, anyway, um, activate. Well, that's basically on par right now. Uh, but it has less efficiency. And nice plumes. That's the best I could do for now. But we're guzzling fuel like crazy now. This is probably too early. But at least it didn't explode. But we're looking at that engine internal temperature right now. And that's getting pretty high. Already. So I might have to change the numbers up a little bit more. Well, these guys are dying down, as we would expect. Uh, it's not able to sustain it in scramjet mode right now. We'll need to give it more thrust. Well, let's get them back on again, maybe. I don't know if they'll produce anything. A little bit, only at this height. But it's still accelerating us. So far it is doing worse than Skylon, of course, that uh, just on the ramjets got to 5.4. And 
and they're out of those are out of air. I don't know what happened to this flamed out too. Well, we definitely can't let them all run out of air like that then. Hold on, you guys stop. And now it's producing more than 2,000, but it seems like then we get this heating problem. Alright, well, I'm going to adjust the numbers again. But at least it didn't blow up. <laughs> and uh, we've got other things working, like the cabin. And, and the plume is what it is, with the little five points instead of just like a flat surface. But yeah, we're slowing down right now, so it just doesn't have enough juice. Alright. Let me make adjustments. Okay, so I have increased the thrust on the ramjet, though not on the jet and uh, jet ramjets, uh, those up there. And I still don't know why there was sort of an imbalance in thrust between the two. That shouldn't be happening, I think. But anyway, it was not uncontrolled or anything like the thrust differential did not cause us to go out of control. But anyway, um, the scramjet now produces 360 base and that ultimately means 3600 until it melts more or less and so we'll we won't be getting to that number at Mach 7 now the question is is that reasonable I have no idea because in my investigations on scramjets there wasn't an easy answer to how much thrust do I get out of a scramjet of this size it's really big uh, but how much can I expect out of it? Now, of course, increasing the thrust isn't a total win, right? The thrust comes at the cost of guzzling more propellant. So, yeah, but of course we need to do that. But we would like to limit that as much as possible. Uh, so, yeah, but given a chamber pressure and a throat size and a nozzle exit, I guess, you know what thrust uh, a rocket engine would produce given the propellants as well I guess but yeah even if I made up the numbers for that for the chamber pressure on this we would know the propellants and we would know the throat size and exit size so all we need to do is make up a chamber pressure but there's no such equation that I know of uh, because the combustion is happening differently so yeah well We'll just make up what we need out of it and go with that. And then the researchers are going to have to make it work, basically. Um, which is, you know, what all the scramjet stuff going on is about, trying to make it work. And if they can't get this to these specs, then any equivalent system is not going to be usable for space purposes. I didn't really want this runway, but I'll just go with it for now and we'll see how it goes. Okay, throttle up and ignition. I don't think we're gonna be fast enough at the end. Well, it's still a surface. Okay, I'm rotating. Trying not to scrape my body flat. Okay. I mean, you know, we're not crashing into any launch sites or anything. If I didn't have the body flap, it'd be easier to rotate, of course, and if we had really long landing gear, that could help too. We just really need to rotate more, but long landing gear means heavier landing gear too. Okay, approaching Mach 1, and there it is, three minutes after takeoff. Well, or engine ignition, I suppose. For now, both engines are balanced. They both have prop requirement met 100% and they both are producing the same amount of thrust. 
But we're not accelerating very quickly, so we are going to switch modes now. Thankfully, I made the mode switch quick. And now, let me see. Ah, this one's short. This one's short. I mean, in theory, they can both get from this intake right now. I've left that open. And it's got effective airspeed and flow and everything. And it's a pretty big intake. This time I won't rush starting the ramjet, as uh, the scramjet. I'll uh, leave it on ramjet mode until we get past Mach 4 without using the scramjet. 1300 meters per second. Maybe I should wait until 1500 just for the heck of it. Okay, it's accelerating too slowly. Scramjet ignition. It says flame out intake air deprived. That's not good. Um, I'm gonna cut throttle on these. Maybe that'll help? I don't know. I feel like it probably won't. Oh, there it's slowing down real fast. It still has a flame out. Okay, shut those down and then activate. But it's too slow now. Uh no, well, I've got the other two on. Now uh now when flame out again. Uh Okay, at 1300 I'll try and switch quickly or something. It's not going to be in high dynamic pressure though. Okay. It's it did it too quickly. And already lost all that speed. Uh Okay, uh what? Uh, how enormous do I have to make the intake for it then? Hmm. Well, I'll just make it an arbitrarily huge number and hope that it will work. Maybe? Alright, well, I'll do that. I'll make it a really big number. I don't know if that'll cause it more drag or not. I guess we'll see. We obviously need more. What can I do? Okay, here we go again. I don't actually know if my edit to the intake actually took in terms of its capacity, but we'll see. So, atmospheric all pilots, throttle up, and ignition. Obviously, these should read 100% prop requirement met already. I up their thrust a little bit. There's still about half the thrust of Skylon's engine. And now they guzzle fuel a lot quicker, so I have to be careful. Okay, breaking Mach 1. Because we had to turn, since we were using the shuttle runway, it uh, took a little bit more time than if we were going straight off the KSC runway. Hopefully we'll get better speed in this mode, which guzzles less liquid hydrogen. Since the engine has been operated a bit. Well, thrust on them is going down now, though. Still accelerating because we're in thinner air. Okay, yeah, acceleration is getting a bit weak here. Switching mode. And so there's ramjet mode. Prop requirement met, met 64%. Really? Both are getting 64% only. Uh, I'm not sure why. That doesn't bode well when we try to use the scramjet. Why does this one have engine internal temperature not a number, Kelvin? 
like it doesn't care where the scramjet has to potentially explode. That one I don't know either. These two seem free from any worry about that. But yep, don't like the prop requirement met thing. It's going up though, so maybe if we go fast enough it'll get to 100, but then will that be okay for the scramjet? I don't know. Well, it's not going up any more than what we have here, and I'll switch at 1400. Well, I'll try to ignite the scramjet at 1400. Well, now it's going up a bit. Maybe we should start the scramjet at low thrust so it doesn't take too much, and then see. Okay, starting the scramjet. Okay, well, it's producing thrust. Oh, but not if we do that. Okay. Currently producing thrust with this much thrust limiter. Oh, but not like that. Okay, less. Okay, I'll shut down the jets. Oh, not good. Ah, uh, no. It doesn't have enough air. Hmm, now what? How? How does that happen? <laughs> doesn't have enough air. Well, can't do anything at this speed. It does more than I would like it to, but as you can see, it can't really even accelerate us. So at least there's that. At least the scramjet can't do things that it's not supposed to be able to do. Um, what? Well, we're too slow to try rocket mode right now. But what if I just skip the scramjet? <laughs> I guess we'll try that once. What if I just don't use the scramjet? Let's see how far we get with just the aero spikes. I mean, it should not be better than the Skylon because Skylon is lighter overall. Its empty mass is lighter. So, we will see. This time we are going to ignore the scramjet entirely, just for once so that we can ignite the arrow spikes. Another thing about the Skylon I made was that because I had to have a rocket mode in it as well, uh, it only really had one jet mode and that had the efficiency of this efficiency that these have right now as opposed to the ramjet efficiency which is lower. So that Skylon had that benefit as well. They had this efficiency all the way up to Mach 5. One thing that doesn't benefit us at all here is any sort of body lift. It is somewhat contoured and it could potentially get some body lift benefit but we don't get anything like that when it comes to FAR in this case. Okay, no longer accelerating much in regular jet mode, ram jet mode. Going up. Okay, Mach 4.8. We're getting to the point where we're at parity between the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen for the rocket mode. But we're not accelerating much. Okay, well, I'm gonna ignite the rocket engines and switch off the jets before they. Okay, vapor and feed lines. I did not see that coming. Uh, I guess I should have waited longer.
Can this still work? Apparently not. We're too slow to get air like this. Okay. Well, that that doesn't work anyway. All right, fine. Uh, I, I'll call it for today. Uh, there's still more work to be done, obviously. I don't know where we can get the right amount of intake air. I already increased it by quite a lot. It didn't seem to do any good. So it's not just the like size of the intake. I mean, or at least not that number that I was changing. Maybe there's another number that I need to change or something. So, yeah, perplexing, um, uh, yeah, so I will work on that as this plunges to its demise again, uh, actually really slowly too, it, uh, really loses speed quite quickly, it has a lot of drag. I could use the engines, but I don't want to, I want to see if we can pull up. Can it glide at all? We're pretty heavy though. Huh, that's interesting. I'm trying to turn off RCS. Something turns it back on. Yeah, I, I'm trying to press RCS, but something is stopping me from turning off RCS. I haven't seen that before. The atmospheric op pause disabled. It still doesn't let me turn off RCS. Why would something not let me turn off RCS? Okay, that's another mystery. We are we, we are not speeding up even though we're plunging directly into the ground. It's got a really low terminal velocity here. It does have abnormal amounts of drag. What if I close the air intake? Oh, it is that intake. Close that one. Uh oh, that still wasn't a good idea. Oh no, it's gone out of whack because I closed one but not the other. Now it's stalled. Okay, well because the intake's so huge, or at least Kerbal thinks it's huge because I set that number really high, it does create a lot of drag there. Not that we noticed high up because the air is so thin. And okay, well, that at least makes sense. So uh, I'll revert that. Don't worry, they didn't actually die. But yes, more work needs to be done. That is the situation. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.